What's up guys and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you my dream editing setup and the different things that I love so much about it. This is something that has taken me months of research and years of saving up to be able to afford, but hopefully it'll help you make adjustments to your current editing setup or help you decide on things that you'll want to add in the future or be thinking about as you upgrade to future setups. So let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about my computer. I edit on a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch with a 2.9 gigahertz six core processor, 32 gigs of memory, and a Radeon Pro 560X four gigabyte graphics card. This computer is a beast, and although it's not Apple's latest MacBook Pro, it does the job super well and it's able to edit everything that I throw at it, all the way up to 8K red footage. A lot of people think that to be a good editor you need a super expensive desktop computer, but I found that because I travel a lot I need to be able to take my computer with me. And for me it just doesn't make sense financially to own two computers, one for home and one for traveling, so I decided to just stick with a powerful MacBook Pro that can still handle those beefy files. Is it the absolute absolute best computer in the world? No, but you gotta find a balance between what will get the job done and what is still relatively affordable, and my MacBook Pro fits both of those for me. I also love how the trackpad is so close to the keyboard. I found that when I use a mouse, I have to move my hand a lot from the mouse to the keyboard which is a weird thing to complain about, I know, but I found that it's easier using a trackpad for my needs and it saves me a lot of time as well. So yes, eventually I will upgrade to the newer MacBook Pros when I'm able to justify buying them, but for now, this fits my needs super well. One of the complaints that I had about my MacBook Pro is that after editing for a long time, my wrist would start to hurt and the edge of the computer would dig into my wrists. So to solve that, I bought a $25 TechNet laptop cooling pad that sets the laptop at more of an angle, which makes it easier for my wrists and it also has super quiet built-in fans that cool the computer down when it's heating up, which can help keep it run fast and smooth. Then I also bought a $10 wrist pad that slides right under the computer, which makes it so that my wrists don't cut into the edges of the laptop anymore, and it makes editing a much more comfortable experience. Also, I have links to all the things that I mentioned in this video down below in the description if you'd like to check any of those out. Now moving on to my desk. I saved up a long time and I decided to buy a Jarvis bamboo standing desk that ended up costing me about $650 bucks. This desk is awesome. First of all, it's 48 inches wide, so it's definitely wide enough for anything that I would need to put on my desk. And then it also has a contour in it, which makes it curve, and then it softly tapers off on the edges so that I can rest my elbows on the desk without it cutting into me. This desk is a standing desk, which means that I can work for a few hours sitting down, and then if I'm feeling a bit antsy, I just push a button, which raises the desk to standing height, which changes it up a bit and burns a lot more calories. Because, you know, health and stuff. I also got a 36-inch shelfy top to put an external monitor on it which looks dope and makes it so that I can edit with two screens at the same time. So moving on to the external monitor that I edit with is actually a 50 inch Samsung 4K TV that I got for around $200 on Black Friday. The TV is too wide to fit on the shelf so I got a black piece of wood that extends the shelf and I put the TV on that. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, a 50 inch TV? That's way too big, especially for sitting that close to it. And you're right. So let me explain. What I do is when I'm editing in Premiere, I undock the program panel and I drag it up to my external monitor where I can position it to be as big or as small as I want it to be. I usually have it only take up about 40% of the screen. And then what I do is I can bring up other windows up on the screen. Like if I'm going through notes that a client has sent me, I can put that to the left of the screen. And if I need a finder window that has my project assets, I can put that to the right of the screen. And it just makes it easier so that I don't always have to be closing and minimizing windows all the time. I I also understand that this monitor isn't the best for color grading, so when I'm ready to color grade, I put my viewing monitor as my laptop screen, and then I have the TV as my coloring window, and that gives me a truer looking color grade. Again, I probably could spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on the absolute best monitor, but this fits my needs for the time being, and it gets the job done while still being relatively affordable. Okay, now moving on to my cable management and what I have plugged in. I edit on these awesome one terabyte SanDisk SSDs. They're not the most affordable external hard drives, but they're blazing fast and they're able to handle my red footage like a champ. Then as soon as I'm finished editing, I offload all the files onto one of my mini eight terabyte external hard drives. I've also tried editing with speakers and Apple AirPods, but I found that what I like best is actually the stock Apple headphones that they send you when you buy a new Apple product. They make it so that I'm more zoned in and there isn't any lag on them like I found there to be with AirPods. And for USB to Thunderbolt adapters, I found that what I like best by far are these Syntec adapters that only cost $9 on Amazon. 
And for my HDMI to Thunderbolt adapter, I got the Uni adapter that was $18 on Amazon. And for my Thunderbolt card reader, I got this $14 card reader that can handle SD and micro SD cards. My chair is a leather back tilt design chair that was $160. And I love this chair because it's not only comfortable, but it can also recline just a bit, which makes it easier to see my screen. And it's just all around more comfortable. And a kind of unexpected feature of my editing setup, but something that it wouldn't be complete without, is a small $33 leather footstool that I can rest my feet up on as I'm editing. This is a game changer. It just makes editing more comfortable and makes it so that I can edit for longer without having to take as many breaks. So this is where the magic happens. I'm absolutely in love with my editing setup. The only things I would change about it is probably having a better cable management system that makes it so that my cables are all tucked away nicely, but that's mostly just for aesthetics. If you have any suggestions of how I can improve my setup, or if you have any questions about any of these products, go ahead and comment down below. Other than that, if you're interested in taking your editing to the next level, I have an online course called Music Video Pro that teaches you everything you need to know to film and edit professional music videos, with a link below in the description. And I'm also in the process of making another online course called Pro Filmmaker that teaches you everything you need to know to become a professional filmmaker and dominate any kind of video. If you'd like to be notified for when that course launches, go ahead and sign up for that with a link below in the description as well. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next one. A lot of people think that to be a good editor, you need a super expensive desktop computer. Desktop, desktop. You need a super expensive desktop computer. <laughs> You need a super expensive desktop. <laughs> <Stop>. <gasps> desktop! <laughs>